Good afternoon. How you guys doing? I thought it was great. Um, again, you know, the intensity rises a little bit. I thought guys went out there, especially coming off a day off and played well. Um, you know, we're just going to continue to stack these days and get better. What have you done, obviously, you know, taking a new role as starter this season and not having that for the past couple of years? What do you have to do to change your mindset and now kind of be that guy, whereas before, you know, you kind of have a specific role as a backup? Well, I don't think it necessarily changes my mindset. I think as a backup, you have to prepare like you're the starter. So the last couple of years, that's been my mentality. Um, so for me, nothing's really changed. Just continuing to build chemistry with our guys and making sure that everybody's on the same page so that when we get out there, we're rolling. Do you feel like maybe you have more of a vocal leadership, though, in this position or voice? Yeah, I would say so. That comes with the position. Um, but I think, you know, especially with the, with the Raiders, um, it was a lot of guys kind of, and we all collaborated and, and tried to make the offense what it was. So I don't feel like I'm saying more than I need to or if there's any sort of like weirdness or awkwardness for me. So um, I'm very comfortable with where I'm at and, um, you know, just continue just trying to, trying to help these guys feel comfortable and so we can go out there and play well. Marcus, how long were you with Coach Smith before you realized what his family background was? He's got a guy with a unique background for a coach. Right. Um, honestly, I think probably a couple of years. I had, had no idea. They, obviously, it's not something that he talks about at all, is it? No, not at all. Have you ever noticed that he talks, though, in sort of business language? He does up here with us sometimes. He uses phrases that you would more closely associate with business stuff, the football stuff. Has that ever popped in your head? Not necessarily. He might be a little different when he's with you guys um, than maybe in a team meeting. Um, but no, I, I think Art has always been very personal with all of us um, and has been straight since the start. If you were born into a billion dollar corporation or whatever it is, do you think you play football? I'm a little weird. I love the game. You know, I, I think I would be. And I think that's what's really cool with Coach Smith is that his passion, I think you can, obviously he doesn't, mean, he doesn't need to be doing something like this, but I think his passion, his drive, his motivation um, is so great. And uh, I, I love being around it. And I think when you're a guy that's in that situation and that position, and you're out here every day pushing your guys and leading the, the way that he leads. Um, you know, it's fun to be around. Maybe makes him a little bit different as a coach than maybe other coaches have been around because, like you said, he doesn't necessarily need to be here. Yeah, I don't know, that's hard to say. I, I think, um, I think like, if you ask a lot of guys, you know, if you didn't know his background, you would have no idea, you know? I think that's kind of how he carries himself, so. Um, as a coach, the way that he leads, the way he communicates um, isn't any different. And I think what stands out in my mind is the way he leads. I think he, he's always pushing guys to be the best that they can be. And, um, you know, it's a privilege to be around that. Does anybody ever bust his chops about it? I mean, you know, like UPS jokes or anything like that? Or is that off limits? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say it's off limits. Uh, we were trying to get Dez to get a uh, snack shipped in UPS, but I don't know. We'll see if that happens or not. How does the competition change when That's you're on a team? Look. Are there a lot of... <laughs> I'm sorry? How does the competition change when you're on a team with a lot of players on these kind of one-year deals? I don't necessarily... I think, I think, for one, it creates an atmosphere when you're out at practice where guys understand that this might be their last opportunity or this might be the best opportunity they've gotten in a couple of years. So the competition on a practice is at a high level. And when you're able to do that, it creates game-like situations and game-like scenarios that when this team gets out there and we start week one, I think guys will feel very comfortable with where they're at. Even though you're not necessarily in that situation with your two-year contract, yeah, do you feel like that in some ways too? Yeah, no doubt. Um, I think one of the biggest lessons I learned while I was in Tennessee is that you know it is a merit-based business and you have to perform. And you know in this position, um, there's always going to be guys that are coming in that you know want to play with in your spot. So I think day in and day out, you have to continue to prove not only to yourself but to the people around you that you can play and you can lead. Um, so I don't take this opportunity very lightly. Is there like an unspoken bond between people like that, players like that, like where you kind of know, like, all right, we're both, we're both in it, maybe we've been overlooked or underlooked, and now we can help each other? 
yeah, I, I think that's a great point. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of guys, you know, I, I've played with a few guys over the course of the last couple of years that are kind of in that situation. So there is a bond. I think there's a relationship. There's an easy rapport. Um, so I, I, I would agree with that. Um, but I think what's kind of cool about this team is everybody gets along really well. Um, you know, there's not, you're not clicky. There's not like different groups of people. I, I think really everyone just likes to hang out with each other, um, which I think in the long run will be good for us. Throwing to Kyle remind you of throwing to anybody else you've thrown, you know, just in terms of the way, the way he runs the draft type of player he is? No, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and compare him to anybody else. I think he's got a very unique skill set, um, one that benefits us, and we just got to find ways to get him the ball. Did you have to adjust to him at all just because to get used to his speed at that size? Was there anything about him that you thought, I have to treat this a little differently? Not necessarily. I think he really makes it easy on us. Um, for a guy that his size, his catch radius, uh, his length, his ability to get in and out of cuts, um, you know, makes it easy on us. His, his body language as a receiver um, makes it simple. So we know when he's coming in and out of breaks. We know when he's going to break down. Um, so it's a credit to him. And I think as we continue through camp, um, that's just going to continue to grow. You just talked about his route running and trying to improve it. How, in terms of that scale, you know, is he a pretty mature route runner for a year or two guy, you think? From what I've seen, yeah. Um, you know, everyone's got a, a skill set. Everyone can always get a little better at some things. And, um, you know, for Kyle, it's just continuing to, to push some of those things so that, you know, he can run really anything on the field um, that allows him to get in different situations and different matchups. How close do you think he is to being able to run anything? I would say he's pretty close, yeah. When you look at AJ, if you're going against AJ now for a week, not at least in pads or speed, what is it that makes him problematic for him? Um, I think from a standpoint that he is physical, uh, he's very athletic, obviously. Um, you know, just being around him, he's, he's, his football IQ is very high. Um, you know, you can see that he, he's pattern reading, he's kind of understanding what's going on. So, um, you know, it's for a young player, I, at least for me, I think it's pretty impressive. Uh, Mark, it's Mr. McGinn here. Uh, he's with the uh, Keith. But uh, what was it like uh, having the first day of padded practice today for you guys? Yeah, it was great. It was great. You know, every anytime the pads come on, intensity rises a little bit. Um, but I thought guys came, especially coming off a day off, guys were out there ready to go. As a vet, do you like how you're kind of eased back into things with the pads and kind of ramping it up as you go, I guess? I mean, for me, I don't, I don't get touched. <laughs> Pad, pads for me don't really make a difference. But um, no, I, I think you can, you look around, guys are fresh, um, especially coming off a day off. You know, guys were running around great. Um, so I, I really like with how our schedule's going and how Coach Smith has, um, you know, built it. You might not get touched, but you feel some heat. When you were talking with Jake about the competition overall on the line. You sense those guys a little bit more, just knowing that there's some open spots and them collectively compete a little bit more. Yeah, and from a standpoint, too, that I think they all understand that if they push each other, the whole room's going to get better. Um, you know, so when you have leaders like Jake in there that can kind of rally the troops and get guys going, um, you can see it. The, the play on, on the offensive line has really elevated and um, makes us all excited. Marcus, what would you say? We heard Arthur and Dean both talk about culture and building and all these things that are not on the field. Can you speak to what that feels like now that you're a part of this? Can you see where that is vital to the success overall of this team? No doubt. I think if you look across the league, everyone's very talented. I think, you know, game in and game out, there's going to be guys on the other side of the ball that you're like, he's a great player, um, this and that. And I think we have those type of players here. But what it comes down to is, you know, talent can only take you so far. When you have a group of guys that are willing to sacrifice and go out there and put in the work, that's when your team gets better and you know you start getting guys that really believe in what you're doing. So um, it's fun. It's fun to be around. I think we got a young group of guys that really just enjoy being around each other, enjoy coming out and competing. Um, and that's half the battle, man. If you can get that out of your young cats, um, I think you're going to do pretty good and do some good things. I know you wouldn't admit it when you were in previous teams and previous cultures, but have you seen a disconnect in how bad culture, you know, not what it is right now, leads to bad success or poor performances? Vice versa. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You know, it, unfortunately, with how the NFL is, 
like we talked about a little earlier, it is a merit-based business and you're paid accordingly. So, you know, guys sometimes, you know, will think selfishly and will focus on what is, you know, their motives. Um, and it makes it tough, you know, if, if a guy's not going to be willing to sacrifice, you know, maybe not to get an extra yard on that third down because he's worried about getting hurt or, you know, something along the lines of that. You know, it is tough because, you know, you're sitting there, you're kind of climbing an uphill battle. Um, but what's fun about this team is it is young, and some of those guys don't necessarily understand that part of it yet. Um, so you can kind of help mold them a little bit and, and try to help them understand that if you just come out here and compete, and if we win games, you know, everyone else around you will, will get what they want. A lot of learning, it's like a learning curve and all that, you know, especially seeing how physical everything is and how fast paced it is. So it's good. What did you learn? You said learning curve, but what were some of the things on that curve? Yeah, you know, just uh, like obviously you're still learning on offense and still learning on special teams, you know, just trying to, trying to build that mode, build the player that I'm trying to be. We always hear that the first day pads is that kind of intense more intensity than the last couple days or whatever. Did you really feel that today? Um, honestly, it's just a lot more physical. Physical. We've been we've been competing like this whole the whole last week. So you know, it's really just just adding more pads onto it because you know this group of guys we're a really fast and physical group, and that's what we strive to be. So it went good. What's it like every day in practice, kind of having that high level of intensity and competitiveness? I mean, even without pads. So it keeps you on your toes for sure. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think. Um, I think everyone just has the right mindset, so you know it's it's been good. What's been the adjustment for you just as a rookie? I mean, obviously first NFL um, practice in pads, but just this whole thing has been the first for you. Yeah, honestly, all of the above, all of the above. But you know, I'm getting the getting the hang of it now, getting the hang of it now, and it's been going pretty well. What's been the big, maybe biggest surprise or kind of thing you weren't expecting? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure actually. <laughs> That's I'll a good come, question. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta come back. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> Does it seem a blur up there? Does it seem like you're just going too fast? No, I think once you get a hang of the playbook and all that, now you can just play fast and literally just, okay, what do I got? Boom, and then just do what your coach did. When did yeah. you feel start to feel that way that you could play a little bit less? Um, I would say probably after. No, no rookie mini camp. No, I'll say once you got the playbook. So like probably like the last couple of weeks of OTAs and stuff. Okay. Once you get the playbook, no, actually on during the break because once you got the break, you have so much time just to study the plays and all that. I think after that, now it's just, okay, I got this, boom, and then lay out onto whatever, yeah. whatever it is. That was, I'm glad that you brought up the off season. What was kind of your goal, I guess, of the five weeks that y'all were away from Flowery Branch, you were away from camp? What were you kind of during, doing during that time? Yeah, getting in the best shape of my life, shoot. <laughs> that and studying the playbook, really. You're literally just doing that day in and day out. Because like the faster you learn the playbook, the faster you'll be on the field. So that's that's really that's really how it is. Have you had your welcome to the NFL moment yet? <laughs> oh, what's that supposed to be? Where you're, uh, <laughs> we're not in college anymore, kind of thing. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I would say for sure. Which was? Um. I don't know. I don't know. But it, it for sure, like, it for sure clicked. So I know I know it happened. It happened one time. What I just you, can't remember. What have you seen out of the group of running backs so far and the way that you guys are able to compete? Shoot, we have a lot of vets. We had a lot of vets in there, you know, just really just learning from them, learning how they learning how they work, learning what they strive for and all that. It's been it's been a good group. What have you learned in just observing those guys? Yeah, really just what they look at, what they look at in the hole, what the, like how they how they pursue practice and stuff, like how much they treat their bodies and stuff. It's literally like treating your body that's literally the money maker right there. So literally just watching them do what they do. And then. Uh, on Saturday, Arthur Smith was talking about how it was the most competitive practice that he's seen since he's been here. What was different about Saturday? <laughs> We've been competing all week, but like Saturday, I don't know. It was like a like a whole different mindset. Or I want to say it was the same mindset, but the intensity just kicked up. And I think everyone, like offense was on defense throw, defense was on offense throw. So, you know, it was, it was just everything. How does that help you in the adjustment to get to the NFL? The fact that everyone's competing, everyone's hungry, everyone's kind of on the same page early. I think it's good because I just feel like everyone has that same that mindset. It's, I think it's all just a mindset thing, you know. If you want to get, we're literally competing for a job. Shoot, everyone's competing, so you know. I think that's really the main the main thing. So you know, just having a whole group of guys just competing it just brings the intensity all the way up. You last for me. Um, how do you personally approach competition? Shoot, just going against the other guy and trying to win that rep. That's what, that's what I see about it. I'm assuming it. you like competition. Oh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be here if I didn't shoot. <laughs>
you mentioned learning things from the other running backs. I mean, you guys all kind of have very different skill sets. What have you maybe taken from some of those guys that you didn't have maybe before? Yeah, shoot. I would say just trying to be that all-around back because, you know, all of them have different different skill sets. You know, we have some scat, some scat, some that pretty good at option, some that are can go out of empty and stuff. You know, just learning those learning those things and kind of implementing those in, into my game while still playing with my style as well. So, you know, just kind of nitpicking all of those, really studying that, and then just trying to build the player. Now that you've had, I don't know, quite a bit of time to get to know Arthur Smith, what do you, what do you think about him and who he is as a head coach, but also as a play caller. No, yeah, no, Coach, Coach Smith is a good, great guy, shoot. You no, know, it's actually really just great list, listening to him and just hearing what he has to say and literally his mindset with everything. But I think he wants us to be like the most physical, physical fast and like just like mentally tough team. And I think he's really showing that, especially with how practice and everything's been going, especially in meetings as well. So it's been good. It's really interesting because I can't remember who I was talking to, but they made the comment. It may have been Kyle. He was like, you know, Coach Smith laid the ground for us on day one that we are going to come out here and be competitive. Is that something that you felt that very first day coming out here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He, they went like, Coach Smith says, like, the best people, the best 53 or 40, whatever, whatever they think, like, they're going to play. So, like, that's what literally, like, flames everyone's, everyone's head. Like, that's what the, the mindset that's going to be. So, like, I think that. With that being said, it's just it just brings everyone. It just puts a fire in everyone. Down yeah, there. it's funny because I think like Arthur has always been very open and honest. He, like what you're saying, like the best guys are gonna play. He, yeah. He's not really a guy about like seniority. Like, oh, you've been here for ten years. I don't care. Like, yeah. for you coming into this as in your rookie year to hear that and to be like, you know what? Like, we're all on the same level. What does that kind of make you feel as you kind of go into this first year? Day, honestly, yeah, I. I just, I honestly just take it day by day because, you know, anything, anything could happen. You know, I just got to make the most out of every rep that I get. And I think that's probably the most important thing because you can't say, and just take it day, like I said, take it day by day. Like if you have a bad practice yesterday, then like, just don't just like brush it over. It's like, today's a new day. You're like, you're still doing what you're doing and just learn from that mistake and just be coachable. I just have one, I just have one more, if that's okay. Um, can you give like a specific example of, of this competitiveness? Because we keep hearing that, like maybe something you experienced, a story or something. Yeah, I would say like within the running back or just, just in general. Just anything maybe that you've experienced or seen that you're like, oh, wow. Like. Shoot, uh, well, oh, there's a bunch of fights. So <laughs> like, uh, like, like we don't fight just uh, just because we, like it's just like just being competitive, like knocking, knocking each other's heads and stuff. It's literally just being physical. Like we wanted to be the most physical team, and that's how we're being physical against each other. But obviously, being safe as well. So I think that's a. That's Is it like good. someone's like talking trash to someone? Is that kind of how that Man, happens? There's, or? <laughs> there's trash talking all over there. Are, there's trash talking all over the place. But I think that's what fires up everyone as well. But you kind of have to keep yourself level because you don't want to freaking just start. Like if someone talks trash, you just want to start fist fighting. But you just got to keep level, but still talk trash as well. So you know, it's just just a dog in everyone. So you know. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot to be thankful for. Um, just getting back into the groove of things after the injury and everything. Um, missing OTAs kind of sucked, um, mm -hmm. but you know it's it's part it comes with the territory, injuries and stuff, and gotta take care of my body. And, and I, I feel like I'm getting back into the groove out here with the fellas. So. Uh -huh. How, I think Coach said, was a knee? Was that you had to get a knee operation? Yeah, I had to get a little minor knee scope there, from the same like knee that I heard back in 2019. Um, but it was all nothing I haven't been through before, and just a little bit of maintenance stuff as I get older. So, um, but I, I feel like a kid again almost, mm -hmm. and um, just ready to get back into the group of things. Okay. And then, uh, um, how did you kind of do the off season? You just studying, and uh, you know, how did you try to do? It? I know they gave you time off and so forth to rehab, yeah. but uh, you know, I know you didn't want to just not do nothing. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I I tried to stay up on top of the the playbook and everything, just making sure that I was mentally still grinding and getting my mental reps and whatnot. That's that's the most you can do when when physically you can't perform out there with them. So um, I was just trying to be there, be a, a veteran presence in, in the locker room for these young guys. We've got a young squad and mm -hmm. stuff. So I think it's important um, to have that. And, and I just wanted to be there as much as I could. And how is the offense, second year offense, do you sense y'all guys are, you know, everybody's, a lot of people back, not, yeah. not on the outside, but 
the core right. is back, do y'all feel it's meshing um, better? Yeah, 100%. Um, it's just like anything, as you get more repetitions, it, it starts to become second nature. And I think being the second year in the system is only going to help us in the long run. You know, we had a, we kind of had a, a young line last year. And um, just being, like I said, being in the second year, everybody's kind of gelling more. And um, you can could, you could feel the energies there. So. And uh, your role in the run game, they want to. I know they want to get the run game going, right. uh, and I know that probably what you want to hear. Yeah, 100%. where is that at, and uh, how do y'all think y'all can get it going with the? With um, that? I think that that's that's where our offense um, re re revolves from, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it all stems from the run game, and I think that's a, a, a big important piece that that we're working on this summer, mm -hmm. uh, just trying to refine all the details, and like I said, second year in the system, just trying to get as as good as we can mm -hmm. uh, to be ready for the season. Thanks, Keith. When you see a guy like Kyler, you know, he's a rookie, but I dog. He, uh, you know, he looks like he, he leans and sponges on a lot of guys too. Kyler, you're, you're running back. Oh yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. me a little bit about what you see from him and just how he's picked everything up. Uh, he's he's real conscious. Um, I think he just pays attention and he he's on his details and he he's got a, a real humble spirit and I think that's what young guys gotta have when they come in. You know, you come from a big program or whatever, all the success you had as a young guy. It doesn't really matter at this level, you know. It's it's all about what have you done for me lately. So um, I think he he approaches the 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 game as a professional, and and he's a great teammate. Do you feel like the backfield's a little deeper this year? I mean, it's not just one guy. You guys have brought some people in. Could be just a balanced running attack rather than number eighty four. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, but I think that's the beauty of it. Um, the it's it's gonna be a a committee type group, you know. And I think as we start to build this thing, um. We'll, we'll all start to get our own roles and, and we feed off each other. So I think it's a good thing. Someone might have asked about this before I got here, but um, the competitiveness of this training camp so far, I mean, we obviously talked Saturday, Arthur Smith talked about how this is, you know, the most intense camp he's kind of seen so far. I mean, what's your perspective on that? Um, I think it is. It's a high, high energy atmosphere. And I think that's what we need, uh, especially coming off the season that we had. There was a lot of disappointments, you know, and I, th I think we, we did a lot of good things, but I think we're building off of those those and just correcting these mistakes. And I think it starts with the energy and, and just having that mindset. Mindset is key in this game, all, all across the board. So I think approaching it the right the right way every day, like we have, I think we're we're on to something. Because you've been here a couple of years, I'm sure you've, you've seen kind of that progression of how it's gotten to this point. Um, do you have like a story from this camp so far that you're like, oh wow, it's different this year? Of uh, just just a little. I want to. I don't know how accurate the statistic is, but I heard that there's only 30 people out of the 90 people that we had last year, and um, I think that just kind of goes to show like how young and how fresh uh, a lot of it is. But I think it's it's a good thing too because we got fresh new new faces, new personalities, and we're we're just building off of it, and I'm excited about it. And to go off that, you're saying with all the new guys, the young guys, a lot of some of the players are saying it almost has like a college practice, like atmosphere, a lot of trash talk, seeing you yeah. going a little crazy. Did you say that? Um, yeah, hundred percent. Um, you know, we just like I said, we feed off each other, and, and I think the competitiveness is good for us. It makes everybody sorry, <laughs> makes everybody better. So um, it's it's always a good thing when guys are kind of going at each other. What's it like to be surrounded by a bunch of guys that are really on these kind of one-off fields and trying to fight to keep a roster spot? Obviously, the energy is up. You talked about the competition, but well, what is that like? Uh, I think it's just it comes with the, the, the game. I mean, you know, the, nobody really cares about the contract. It's, it's all about what you're doing and staying in the moment, you know what I'm saying? And, and I know guys are working for, for different things, but at the same time, it's like the ultimate goal is, is to win and win a championship. And, I think if, if guys continue to stay on that mentality, we're, we're going to be successful. Even though it's super early, what makes you think that this defense is going to be more competitive this year? Uh, you just see, you can see the energy, you know what I'm saying? And and that's that's one thing that being a, a defensive guy from the core, um, starting my career as a defensive guy, you, you know that you kind of feed off of that energy, you know, and, and that young, youthful, um, just sporadic, you know, you, you want that. You want that spontaneousness. And, it, I don't know if that's a word, but anyways. But, <laughs> it is now. All right, but, but I think it's, it's a, a good thing for us. Did you see Dean Pease's comments from Saturday? I didn't. I missed them. Did you hear about it? 
No, I didn't. Basically, he was super fired up about the fact that a lot of people sleep on the Falcons. And oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, we just set out the chatter. You know, no, nobody can, can judge us. You know, like, we know what we have. We, we know what we're putting in the work every day, day in and day out. And, and that's what it's going to be. And, and we'll, we'll, prove, we'll prove it when, when the, the lights are on. So we're not worried about none of that. Congrats on the baby. I heard people say it to you. Thank Everything you. going Thank good? You. Yeah, yeah, no, everything's blessed. My, my lady's good. She's she's recovering. My son, he's he's healthy, so all is good. Does it give you a fresh perspective of life? A hundred percent. You know, I mean, just this is my uh, my first boy, so it's, it's near and dear to me. He's, he's going to be a third named after me as well. So um, I'm excited uh, just to have that legacy of my, my last name continued, and uh, it's just a blessing. Love that. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you.